Hi there, Jeremy Powell here again. Welcome to the next edition of the Academy. Uh, I'm pretty passionate about this next topic because really what we get to get into for the first time is technology as it relates to value-based care. Um, and if you think about it, like the the world of technology evolves m much faster. If you um, we're honest with ourselves, we carry around technology in our pockets that <clears throat> give us access to data and information at the same level as, as the most powerful amongst us across the globe and say like the 90s. Like we literally have grown that much just since um, just since that time. And if you think about healthcare and what technology is working on inside of uh, the third platform, which we talked about in our last Academy content, we're really working hard on solving for things that can be made visible, um, including cohorts that need attention, uh, patient engagement that should happen, prioritization of your clinical team, improving your model of care. Uh, it often comes from being able to realize the difference between sort of a standard population or an average population um, and the advanced illness or rising risk population. And I'm going to come back to this concept because it's, um, it's an important one in the work that all organizations that take on value-based care contracts do across their population. It's risk stratification, and often that goes undefined. So I'm going to step into what is risk stratification. So there is a number of ways to look at um, a population of patients. Uh, if you take claims detail, for instance, out of the first platform, the persons that sit inside of that claims detail are often not well structured or undefined, unknown to um, the clinical model of care because you really don't get to know them until you yourself align your clinical acumen, your knowledge and experience to their specific subjective and objective detail. Um, so if you take that population, seeing, um, you know, seeing uh, clinicians across all sorts of institutional care settings, sometimes in their homes, sometimes in clinical clinic settings, um, what you have to do is you have to look through, okay, well, how do I identify that this person's needs is beyond the average scope for typical patients that are impaneled under my care. So you can look at things like resource utilization banding. You could look at how either CH, uh, CMS or HHS define hierarchical condition coding risk, which is really <clears throat> the demographics of that person, age, sex, um, race, their socioeconomic status, the number of problems there are diseases that they manage, the number of meds they're on and on and on and on. It's those, those kinds of things that define risk you can look at really um, um, unique and um, sovereignty level risk tools. So this is Johns Hopkins tooling uh, called ACG, which is just their grouper for risk stratification. You can scale it based upon the concurrent needs of the population. You can look at things like probabilities of certain things happening like hospitalizations or ICU utilization. You can look at mortality predictions, medication risks, um, cost and utilization risk. Uh, functional status, et cetera. So a whole host of ways to do what's called risk stratification. But again, what you're really attempting to do is to say, okay, is my person actually just managing chronic conditions with repeat medications, or are they starting to really have significant impact from a disease burden or the number of um, therapies that are pharmaceutical in nature called polypharmacy? Are they starting to have such a stacking of need um, from from their care burden or their uh, disease burden that they're really starting to to sort of um, be expand beyond curative care have they crossed the chasm into an advanced illness or rising risk population it starts here in identification but really has a real impact and cost and utilization over here um, if technology is deployed well it starts to build insight so like over here I have a diabetic are they taking metformin according to the diagnoses um, and prescriptive uh, NDC level detail? Are we seeing that show up in the meds that are refilled? Um, are they getting their foot and eye exams done annually as their HbA1c blood sugars being managed well? <clears throat> That's one part of what you have to do to provide insights. You also could say for my diabetics that are really de dealing with like significant also, you know, other incremental items so they kind of foot or eye problems. You want to get them into the clinic, maybe even um, into group where they're getting support from other diabetics. You can apply machine learning to make sure that there are things that like an annual wellness visit that are done when appropriate 
And then you could support flowing content into those person's families to support them with exercise, the right nutrition, the right kind of balance for medications versus um, lifestyle. So again, that standard kind of population level care. Once you get over here, it's that same thing, but you're really looking at how much of this person's burden is, in fact, is impacting their ability to remain independent, stay at home, to care for themselves, to drive, um, to be able to cook and feed themselves? Um, how much do we need to align workflow? So social workers or aides that are coming into the, to the home for personal care, um, bathing, toileting, you know, routine kinds of care like that. How much can we identify this cohort and stack them into very specific models of care? So these are examples of the kinds of care that might be applied to persons that are facing advanced illness, especially in the last corridor of life. And then same thing, how do I educate the family about access, utilization, the right patterns? When you do this well, it's capturing the risk, building cohorts, and then taking those cohorts or segmented patient populations through the right level of pathway. Um, this can be ratcheting up the level of intensity to match severity or acuity. It can be understanding, did the things we applied actually have a return for this person? A return would look like better satisfaction, better able to manage care in the right locations, uh, avoiding the emergency room for non-emergent you know, non you know, medicine, it's those kinds of things you end up looking for. And the feedback you should get out of your technology is, are the things my clinical staff either engaging in centralized roles like coordinators or navigators and the things my point of care staff, are they providing the impact we expected or the return on the investment you're making? And when you do that well, that's the measure of a good technology being deployed for a really good reason and aligning to great value-based care kinds of contracts. And that's where I think the magic happens. So excited to dive in deeper here as we talk through podcasts and other content with you all at the Academy. Again, if you have questions or want to hear us chat about something you really worry about in your world, send those to info at acclivityhealth.com. Have a great one.